Hotepu, and welcome to this installment of the Spiritual Adventures of Little Beetle. Little Beetle will be our character, a young African gay shamanic initiate being taught the religion of the sky. And we will use him as our guide in our imaginations to learn the dynamics, the physics, and the spiritual meaning of the motions of the heavens. So let's begin. Imagine yourself back in ancient Egypt under clear night skies. There you stand with your master by your side, who turns to you and says, The last time we were here, I taught you to look at the east, the south, the west, and the north, up close, and to notice the direction of the gods, the nature of their dance, and the message that direction brings us. Today's lesson will have two main parts. One will be how to learn to orient yourself towards any direction as long as you know if you're facing east or north. The other lesson will be to observe not just the cardinal directions motions but the movements of the entire horizon and there within lies another teaching about the mysteries of life. Where you see here in the east, that mountain by the east, that is the place of the Sphinx. We carved the great and mighty Sphinx to forever face due east. He's always interested in seeing who's rising in the east. Imagine yourself climbing with reverence and honor upon the back of the Sphinx, and now you face what he faces, which is due east. That means whenever you face east, the north is your left hand. So imagine if you're facing east, your left hand has the North Pole star in it. That's your north. Therefore, your right hand holds the south. So when I'm on the Sphinx, I have the North Star in my left hand, and I have the South in my right. Let's turn northbound. If I'm facing the North Pole Star, west is to my left, east is to my right. Memorize these two and you could extrapolate if you're facing south or west. It's the opposite of these hands. So again, we are on the back of the Sphinx who's staring due east. That means his left paw, your left hand, holds the North Pole Star. The Sphinx's left paw holds the energy of the North Polaris Star. His right paw faces towards the south. If you're facing north, left is the west. That almost rhymes to help you recall it. And the east is the right. Now, let's return to the east and look at the entire line of the horizon from north to south and look at the motion of the sky gods if you look at the entire shot from north to south. Just let your eye for a minute tune into the general motion of this half of the sky. What do you see, little beetle? You see a motion that seems to funnel upwards in front of the Sphinx, in front of due east, and then the stars have an effect of like a fountain radiating outwards. So they go up this column of water, so to speak, in the center of the east, and then they radiate outwards, dropping like the palm leaves of the desert. So here we're seeing an outward motion. Energy seems to come from a central column 
and spill outward. This gives the visual effect of radiating energy, which is one half of the great cosmic motions of energy in the universe. From a central area radiating outwards. This motion is called a toroid, which simply means shaped like a donut. The center east here is the hole of the donut, and then the stars seem to spill out towards the edges. If we face west, look at the difference in the motion. It's as if the stars are coming from the edges down a funnel towards the central western column, like they're being swallowed, going inward. Here the western sky has the visual effect of energy coming inward. So, what is the main lesson of this? The main lesson is the sky gives us a clue to two fundamental motions of energy. In the West we see energy collapsing in on itself, returning to some central source. This we call in our science gravity, the gravitational force. In the East we see energy moving from a central point in the East upwards and outwards called the radiating force. So you have gravitational energy pulling you in towards a center and you have radiating energy going from a center outwards. So we see energy going out and then coming back into itself. Going out again and coming back in on itself. This motion is very important. We call it the going and the returning. All things in the universe have a starting point and go outward into life only to come back and feed into itself the lessons it's learned. This outward motion we call going out. It's the adventure of discovery, of experience. And then there comes a point when you assimilate what you've learned. That's the inward motion shown here by the West. This you know every day. A coming and going. A going out and a coming back. You wake up. You go out to help build pyramids. You go out to see your friends by the Nile to go to the temple schools, only to what? Return home, coming back to your center. This coming and going is eternal. You meet your friends, you leave your friends. You visit someone, you come back home. The universe expands itself, as we see here in the East, expanding itself radiating outward to learn, to experience things, only to reabsorb it into itself in the West, to digest its lessons. If you can open your mind heart to the power and depth of this lesson, you will have a master key to the secrets of the universe by simply looking east or West. May this lesson be with you for all eternity. Dwawend Hotepu.